Welcome back to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, and we have another great edition of the show today. And today we are talking about a subject that I did not even know about until our guest reached out to me and said, hey, I want to come on your show. And I said, yes, let's do it. And I was like, what are we going to talk about? Oh, no, here's what we're going to talk about. Okay, I'm going to start doing some research and the more I researched, the more I prepared, the more I was excited to have this guest on. And today we are talking about Calgary Caesar Fest, which is coming up in May of 2022. Now, for those who don't know, invented in 1969, the Caesar was created by restaurant manager Walter Shell. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that gentleman's name right here, of the Calgary Inn. Today, it's more commonly known as the Western Weston Hotel. Shell devised the cocktail after being tasked to create a signature drink for the Calgary Inn's new Italian restaurant. And this is the official Caesar Festival of Calgary. And Rachel Drinkle is the purveyor of fun when it comes <laughs> to the whole thing. Rachel, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure. Uh Thank you so much for having me, Chris. I'm really excited about being able to talk about this uh, amazing event for Calgary. Well, I'm so happy to talk about it, too, because uh, as I said in our pre-interview, I didn't know the Caesar was created here in Calgary. Like this, is this like the worst kept secret or am I just that oblivious to when it comes to Caesars <laughs> that I didn't know? Like, is it one of Ca Calgary's worst kept secrets that it is created here in Calgary? I don't like, I know that the tourism and travel people really take it on. And when they go to different events, they'll they'll be, you know, hosting them. We like, oh, come and taste the Caesar. It was invented in Calgary. And I know quite a few people do know about it. But um, it, yeah, I guess not everybody does. So it's kind of a surprise. And I know um, one of the reasons that I created the Caesar Festival here, here and once I found out that the Caesar was created here was I know that it's uh, there's actually a, a there was a festival in, in 2018 in, in Toronto. And I was like, hold up. <laughs> Toronto doesn't get the Caesar Festival. Ontario doesn't get the Caesar Festival. This is a Calgary Caesar Festival. So I really am like, we got to take back this ownership. Like, yeah, they can borrow it. Western Eastern Canada can sort of you can drink it but no we're claiming that this is ours and we need to really make everybody more aware of the fact that yeah this is you know one of calgary's greatest contributions to canadian culture so how did you come to the idea of caesar fest because uh understandable like there was a caesar fest in ontario but you're, you're one person how did you get the idea or did you get a group of people together and say okay you guys you know what we need to celebrate this. We need to celebrate part of our history and we need to do it. So that way Torontonians don't be knocking down the door and saying, oh, it was actually created out here. No, it was created in Calgary. How did the idea come about and how did you get involved with it? Yeah, well, you know, I have been an event planner of sorts for years and years. I have hosted events for up to 16,000 people. I did a Canada Day event. Canada Day is my Christmas. And, you know, if you're doing a Canada Day party uh, I, and I host a, a drink or drunch on Canada Day every year, that's pretty epic. And we have people that fly in or, you know, did fly in from all across Canada for my drink old Canada Day drunch. And you can't have a Canada Day drunch without a Caesar bar. So, I mean, obviously there's that connection there for me and uh, just really enjoying planning events and seeing the need and saying, you know what, we, we, we can really make this something. And once I started looking, there was uh, some people on social media, uh, Dustin and Drew and a few others that had the YY Caesar Fest uh, Twitter tags and the social media. And I contacted them and we decided one year to do a bit of a Caesar crawl. So we got together and did a Caesar crawl around Calgary and, and drank as many as we possibly could, which, you know, is a few. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it, it was a process that took the day, but, and then it was like, you know, I think that we can do better than this. I think that we can, we really need as, as, as a city of Calgary, I think we really need to make this a thing. And we need to make this, you know, in Western Canada, it's, it, the Caesars are massive and they're huge and they're, and they're so loved. And I think that we could have a really big event. So I got together a committee of people that were, were really interested in, in doing an event like this. And we said, okay, well, you know, let's maybe start small. And I was like, well, I think that it's going to be a little bit bigger than small. And 
but I was like, let's have it at the Stampede so that way we can sort of scale up. And then we sold out in about a day when we first really released our tickets in 2020 uh, and then had a waiting list of over 700 people that wanted two to six tickets. And these were people from all across Canada. And we were like, oh my goodness. So we were gonna, we scaled up and we were gonna have it at the big four and then all of a sudden COVID shut us down. Oh, so wow. we weren't able to execute the event obviously. And uh, you know, the committee, we really just disbanded everything. Everybody went in different directions. Um, and, and we just sort of like left it. And then in about November, I was like, well, I wonder if 2022, like we're starting to see some, some hope, <laughs> some glimmers of, of possibility. And I was able to, to work it out. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's try this again. And so I, I was like, I just started putting it together again. And I was like, Hey, let's just do this. And, uh, got together a team. And uh, so I've got this incredible marketing and branding team, Christy Frazier, that's working with me. And she was on the committee last time doing the marketing. And uh, the IT guy, uh, Drew, he is going, he's working with us again this year. And, you know, a few of the other committee members have come back to help in a capacity. And this time we, we really understand the scope and how big it could possibly be. So I was like, you know what, we're going to turn this into a two-day event. It's going to be National Caesar Day, uh, and this is the fact, I don't know if you know this, but Dave Bracogne in 2009 declared the Thursday before the May long weekend as National Caesar Day. Uh, why he didn't do the Sunday of the long weekend as National Caesar Day is, I will really have to talk to him about that. You know what I mean? We'll really have to discuss that. But it, the, the Thursday before the May long weekend has been declared National Caesar Day. Uh, the corporations, of course, took that and have ran with it. And it's just gotten bigger and bigger every year. And so uh, what a better way to host than on National Caesar Day. And then there was such demand from across the country that they were like, well, wait, we can't make it on Thursday. Can you like do another day? And I was like, yeah, okay, well, we'll do, Thursday is really about the locals and we're really gonna celebrate Calgary Friday. It's about the locals as well, but hey, travelers, come on in for the party, stay for the long weekend. And, uh, so I think that it's going to be a really successful two-day event, and we're looking forward to making it an annual event. So and I just want to, I just want to, just want to confirm for everyone. So uh, that it means that this year's event, so the first annual Caesar Fest, will be here in Calgary, will be May nineteenth. So that's Thursday, May nineteenth, and you have added that second day, which is Friday, May twentieth. So there's two days. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, doors open at four p.m. or five p.m. They're going to be open four o'clock for our VIP section and five o'clock for our general admission. Now, what 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 is entitled? So I'm assuming it's still at the Stampede Ground. I'm assuming it's still happening downtown Calgary. So. What 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 do we expect to happen during the two day event? Like, is it just come as you go, or is there going to be uh, different types of Caesar mixes? How's the day going to actually transform? Uh, transpose. Yeah. Uh, so the Thursday and the Friday, what it's going to be is going to be a a, a tasting event. We're going to be inviting about forty um, plus Caesar vendors, whether that be restaurants, distilleries. Oh, uh, hold pub. on, hold on, hold on. There's 40 different vendors who do Caesars in this city? Oh, yeah, for sure. We have some incredible <laughs> vendors that do. And that's the great thing about Caesars is that, you know, they're so um, versatile. You can do anything with them. And in, in essence, you still have the, you know, the, the, that tomato clam mixture is at the heart of it all. But I mean, you mess around with spices you can mess around with the alcohol you can mess around with the garbage the garnishes and the rim and there's just so many opportunities to do crazy things with it and uh recently the garnishes have just gotten out of control on this on the caesars so uh somebody sent me a uh a thing and i think it was more the united states the bloody mary and we'll talk about that after but i mean the the the, the garnishes are getting to the point where you know you have full meal deals on top of a caesar <laughs> so um so what people are going to come in is that we're going to have, you know, a bunch of different Caesars for them to taste. We know that you can't possibly taste 40 different Caesars. Uh, so we're also going to include, at least not back to back. So we're That's including true. a few local vendors 
I like to call them our palate cleansers. And our palate cleansers are going to be our craft breweries, uh, cideries, some of our other, you know, maybe some non-alcoholic um, beverages and just different things for people to, to cleanse their palate so that, you know, they can, they can really, you know, go in and, and taste those other Caesars. Now, I, for those who are listening and those who might not, who might not have ever tried a Caesar, what's actually in a Caesar? Because uh, you said Clamato juice and I'm like, okay, that I've never had Clamato juice in my life. So therefore I've never had a Caesar in my life. So what is actually in a Caesar? And uh, you say about the garnishing, but let's actually talk about that original drink that Shell made in 1969. What is in the Caesar? Well, the original one that Shell made in 1969, he was really going for that Italian flair. And the dish that he came up with was a uh, spaghetti, and I'm not going to pronounce this right. I'm sorry, uh, the Voganol, uh, I believe it is. And it's like a tomato and clam okay. uh, pasta sauce. And he started mixing and crushing clams and creating a clam juice and mixing it with the tomato juice. This was something that was started in some of the cocktail bars in the States. Uh, previous to Shell, there was something called a clam digger out there that was mixed that tomato and clam juice, but Shell works on it for about two months, two or three months. And he, you know, he perfected the mixture of the tomato and the clam, the ratios and added some extra spices and vodka. And there he was, it was, and it was created as a Caesar. It was, you know, named after Caesar himself and, uh, the story goes that an English man walked into the bar and, and Shell gave him a, one of the one of these drinks. And he said, damn, Shell, that's a damn good bloody Caesar. And so it was sort of a the bloody Caesar is its full name. Uh, but, you know, we all know it now is just the Caesar. One interesting tip that I found about uh, the Caesar that Shell made was that he actually used his secret ingredient was oregano when he first made it. Wow. So, yeah. That, yeah. OK. Um there has been comparisons over the time, and we talked about the United States here a few seconds ago, so let's talk about that, about the Bloody Mary and the Caesars, about the, the similarities, but also the Caesar being sort of an offshoot of the Bloody Mary. Can you just take me through, because again, for those who may not have ever had a Caesar or may be going, well, Caesar's actually just a Bloody Mary. Is there a difference? And if so, what? Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You are disgusting. And our hold, hatred hold, for the hold Bloody on, Mary is- Hold on oh, two seconds. Sorry. You, you cut out there. I literally finished my question and then you froze for two seconds. So uh, if you can pick up from where the, w the question is and then go from there. Yeah, no, there was a there was a huge difference. And I think our hatred as Canadians for the Bloody Mary is is equal to our love for the Caesar. And it, and it seems really odd, I know. And Jim Gaffigan does a really great uh, sketch on it on the Pale Tourist about like how Canadians just like we loathe the Bloody Mary and it's just gross. And it's like, but, you know, give us our, our Caesar with, uh, you know, that perfect combination of tomato and clam. And it's, it's just so much more lighter and more refreshing and it's just you know the canadian way but like yeah we are the the bloody mary is just disgusting and it, we all know it as canadians it's, it's vile it's like thick it's like heavy you know the caesar it's nice and light it's something you know that it's to me it's a nice transition drink if you're going from cocktails to beer or beer to cocktails what do you drink in between you drink a caesar a Caesar is one of those things you can order at 10 o'clock in the morning or you can order at 10 o'clock at night and nobody's going to look at you funny no matter what time of the day you order it. It's great. It's, you know, when I go, I, my favorite thing to do when I travel is sit in an airport and go and have a Tim Horton sandwich with a Caesar for breakfast. Like that's, that's, my, that's my favorite vacation, pre-vacation breakfast is the Caesar, the Tim Hortons. I was like, you don't get any more Canadian than that. I guess I should have asked this very early on in the interview, but I'm going to ask it right now because we're talking about the Caesar so much. Do you remember your first Caesar? <laughs> I, you know, I've thought about this and I was like, I really don't. Like, I, don't, I just, 
I, I think it's just one of those things that we all grew up with them. You know what I mean? And, and whether we grew up with the virgin kind and mixing, you know, or at the, anytime you went to the lake, <laughs> You know, I grew up in Saskatchewan and that's, you know, May 2-4, you know, you're drinking those things. <laughs> like, Out by the lake, drinking like, the Caesar. It's, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just part of growing up. It's just, you know, one of those beverages like, akin to, you know, the in Saskatchewan at least, it's like drinking a snur. Like you grow up drinking snur and drinking Caesars. <laughs> and it's just to me, like, yeah, I can't even imagine. I don't even know what my first one was. Uh, or when I was first wowed by one. Yeah. Do, you, do you still find, because you, you talk about the fact that you can order it at 10 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night, and there's a lot of people who just wouldn't look at look at you differently. Um, do you find that the Caesar does have that reach that almost anyone, it seems like from probably conversations, like if I go randomly pull 50 people in the area, about 49, because I'll be the 50th who says never had a Caesar in my life. Uh, 49 of them will say, yeah, I've had a Caesar and they're great. Do you find that like, because we were always about, oh, I don't like Budweiser. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. But Caesar, sure, I'll take a Caesar anytime because it's one of those universal drinks that all Canadians just enjoy and just are okay with. Yeah, I I think it's really funny. I've tried to introduce the Caesar to, I lived overseas for four years in South Korea and there was a, a Canada bar that uh, in Seoul that you could go to. And uh, for my birthday one year, I took a bunch of my friends and so they were from people from all over the world, all over, you know, England, Australia, uh, you know, Ireland, uh, everywhere. And so uh, took them to the Canadian bar and ordered up a round of Caesars. And uh, the response, when they first took a sip was of horror they were <laughs> they were like this tastes like seawater like why is this so salty like this is horrible like what are you Canadians thinking <laughs> I was like they're like we need to get our blood pressure checked now like after it was like <laughs> and I was just like what like seriously uh yeah so it's it's very very but the follow-up question to that is did they have another one afterwards after they started yeah, to enjoy? No. <laughs> I think I ended up drinking all of the ones at the table. I'm pretty sure is how that went down. <laughs> and I don't think they trusted this Canadian ever again when it came to buying rounds of beverages. <laughs> so it, it's definitely, you know, a national sort of thing. And I and it's very cool because I'm also a huge lover of the craft beer scene. And I find that, you know what, there's a lot of people that... Um, don't drink craft beer but they drink caesars and usually and, and but i don't know too many of the craft beer drinkers that also don't drink caesars so as far as that universality i think you're you know you're very right like this the caesar just seems to hit everybody's taste buds and and whether you're a, a beer drinker or a cocktail drinker you know the caesar is the perfect beverage for everybody now let's turn to the that the event we talked a little about a little bit about it already but let's talk about it a little bit more in depth you did talk about that in 2020 you started this event you had sold out and you had a waiting list 700 people long now the the question that everyone is probably going to ask is have you expanded for 2022 now that you know that there are so many people out there who want to come to this festival, have you expanded or is the number still the same? And if so, are you ready for another waiting list? Well, our, our waiting list grew to over 1400 people throughout the <gasps> last couple of years. Yeah, so it, it doubled it, which uh, in 2020, we were only planning on hosting a one day event. So the expansion really came in with that two day event. Uh, and it came in when, our original event where we were only looking at about 300 to 700 people and now we're looking at 3000 people each day so uh i i'm still hoping and expecting a sellout to be honest uh just because of the excitement 
that we've seen around it in 2020. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't have made it a two day event if I didn't think that we could sell out and be really successful. And I'm hoping that maybe next year we'll make it, you know, a whole week long event or we, there is going to be kind of a Caesar fest week element after where we are going to be creating a digital and printed map for people. So if they didn't get to try all the Caesars at Caesar fest, they'll be able to take a map and be like, Oh yeah, I really wanted to try this one. And they'll be able to find it. And, find out where to get some of the ingredients and the grocery stuff. Yeah. Now tickets, where are they available? Where can people start picking tickets? Up tickets are available on Eventbrite right now. Yeah, we have uh, a general admission tickets. We've got, um, we've got VIP tickets and I do have an exclusive VIP ticket set. There's only eight of those available each day. And uh, that the exclusive VIP is for those that want to take and, you know, really play the uber vip uh the ticket is two thousand dollars but it includes six tickets and you get table side service and you get introductions by the vendors and you know all the people that make some of these spirits and and different things and you know where can you it's, pick it's those kind tickets of a, up? a cool thing for calgary where can you pick those tickets up those exclusive same, same on eventbrite yeah on eventbrite all of our tickets in our um our tickets are 20, our general admission tickets are $25. And then you have a, a few dollars of Eventbrite fees, of course. And uh, we're we're really excited to be able to give your listeners a discount code, which I think we're going to be including as part of the broadcast. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to give your listeners 20% off and we'll, we'll set up a code and you guys can go into Eventbrite and uh, enter in the code CBI Caesar and you'll get uh, 20% off. So for those who are wondering where those tickets are, you uh, if you've actually, before I mentioned that, uh, I'm assuming there's a website that you can go to unless you can't navigate Eventbrite because Eventbrite is very tricky. No, it's not. It's very easy to use. But there's a website that you can go to and then it will actually take you to the ticket page, correct? Correct. And they can look under Calgary Caesar Fest or YY Caesar Fest, either one. Uh, yeah. that'll direct you to a ticket page there. We're also on all the social media. So we're on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook under YY Caesar Fest. Now it's really important that you include the YY Caesar Fest in there. It's all about the Calgary. It's not Caesar Fest. It's not Canada Caesar Fest. It is YY Caesar Fest. So, so for those who have listened to the show before, we're, we're bringing this back to Calgary where it belongs. I'm sorry. For for those who have listened to the show before or watched the show as they are doing right now, if you're watching this via YouTube, um, you know what to do. Scroll down. Social media links to YY Caesar Fest, the website, the Eventbrite page, the link to the discount code for the uh, cross-border interviews with Chris Brown listeners is going to be in the show notes. So scroll down. It will be there. You will be able to get that 20% off. Um, Come celebrate Calgary's favorite cocktail. Calgary Caesar Fest is taking place on May 19th and 20th right here in the birthplace of Canada's official national cocktail. As listeners and viewers of the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, you will receive 20% off your tickets when you use the promo code CBI Caesars. That's C-B-I Caesars, all one word. Just visit calgarycaesarfest.com and get your tickets today. I want to I want to talk a little bit more because I feel like we've just scratched the surface. Now, when you attend this event, because I was just looking online at the Eventbrite page, um, not right now, but prior to the interview, uh, Caesars are two dollars, correct? Tickets to actually get a Caesar. So you have to pay for a ticket to get in. And then there's a ticket cost for each Caesar at each event. Just take me through that process as well. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a sampling event or a tasting event. So we are going to have sample tickets on sale for $2 a piece. And then we're going to allow the vendors to choose their price. So it might be one or two or three tickets. And that to us is really, it's dependent upon the extravagance of the garnish that they're going to include. So because, you know, the vendors are going to be receiving a portion, you know, 50% of the funds back to them um, because we want to be able to support them as far as really making this you know not we do we don't want this to be cost prohibitive for any of the vendors we want them to you know at least be able to break even 
Uh, it's been a really hard year for a lot of the restaurants, the pubs and the distilleries. It's been a really, really tough couple of years. And for us, this is just a really great way for them to, you know, sort of reintroduce themselves uh, to the public and be like, hey, we're still here. <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we didn't get shut down because of COVID. We survived and, and let's party and let's celebrate this. And I think the timing of it, you know, the May long weekend, it's, it's such a perfect time for, you know, renewal and energy and, you know, it's that spring and everybody has a little more lightness and hope in their steps. And so with the sampling, yeah, it is going to be two to anywhere, you know, I, I really don't know how, how extravagant the vendors will get in their garnishes, but, uh, you know, I was like, you know, if somebody wants to put a full meal deal and sell their Caesar for $10, then, you know, they're welcome to it. Uh, but the great thing is too, is at the end of it all, that everybody that comes is going to have an opportunity to vote for their favorite. Favorite. Ooh, so yeah. we're going to have a best Caesar in Calgary award. You bet. Uh, we're going to have a best YY Caesar Fest uh, Caesar. And it's funny because I know the craft breweries that I've talked to, they're hilarious. And they're like, oh, Rachel, we're going to make a Beezer and we want to do this. And I was like, no, I need your beer. We need palate cleansers. I don't need more clamato based beverages. But I know all of the, all of the craft breweries are like, oh, we're going to make a Beezer. And I was like, so it might have to have two categories. We might have to have a Caesar and a Beezer category. So <laughs> well, we'll see. But I was like, yeah. So that's, what? that's we're, we're kind of working how we're going to do that, whether it's going to be a ticket and you vote for your best in like a bucket. Uh, ideally, what we'd like to do is set it up so that you can vote online. You'll be able to, you know, vote online for your favorite and then we'll announce it. And yeah. So I, be... I, I hate to ask the million, the, not the million dollar question, but the uh, the elephant in the room question, but COVID-19. Oh. Uh, while we are slowly getting out of the pandemic, or the restrictions are being lifted here in Calgary and across Alberta. Um, are you still going to adhere to some social distancing or are you going to try to get back to somewhat of a normal festival? We're definitely going to be following any of the AHS guidelines that are required at that time. Uh, we are going to be, of course, we're spacing things out uh, in the space. I think I could have actually had 176 vendors. Oh, well. And I'm choosing to have, you know, substantially less than that, just so that we can allocate for a lot more space in between guests. Um, the big four is a very large venue. So we'll be doing that. Of course, there'll be um, any, any, yeah, we'll be following anything and, uh, and God, and yeah, if, if anything does come up and, and, you know, we have to cancel again, then everybody will be getting full refunds. So uh, there is no risk to purchase and it's the tickets. We, we don't suspect every single person that I've talked to uh, from tourism and travel and the stampede. They're all very, very confident that this is going to be able to go ahead uh, as seen. And, uh, uh, you know, if, if anybody has their ear to the ground about what what's going to happen or not, it's definitely those stampede people, right? Like they, they, <laughs> They usually have a pretty good uh, ear to the ground of uh, of how restrictions and things are going to be looking, and uh, they've assured me that this event is going to be a large success. So, oh, yeah. that's awesome! I'm I'm pretty confident. I mean, yeah, a little nervous, of course, but <laughs> well, I was going to say it must be get you must be getting somewhat nervous because we are. This is being released in March. So that's two months away from Caesar Fest. Why, why Caesar Fest? I just want to make sure I say that right here for my <laughs> listeners. But it, it's coming down. It's getting to it. Are you excited? And how 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 do you control yourself? Because the closer it gets, the probably more stressed you're probably getting because you're saying, okay, is X, Y, and Z done? Are we going to be able to pull this off with everything that we have to do and with your committee together getting it off the ground and making sure it does like you said not just happen in 2022 but 2023 2024 2025 um our, our my philosophy this year is to keep it is that kiss principle you know keep it simple um and and because this is the first year event i'm 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 always kind of like wheeling myself 
myself in and being like, okay, like <laughs> we can do this and this. It's like, okay, we're going to keep this simple. We want to keep it as basic as we can. We're not going to overdo it as far as like a lot of craziness. There's a lot of room for growth. I fully expect there to be a lot of mistakes made this year. Um, that happens whenever you're hosting a new event. You know what I mean? It's always a learning a learning curve for sure. And this is going to be a big learning curve because we're doing the two days versus the one. Uh, so uh, there's, there's definitely a lot. Uh, there's a few panic attacks in there. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> But no, I am super excited and I am super excited because I've talked to so many of the vendors that were going to be a part of it in 2020 and they are so excited to be coming back and we're getting a lot of vendor interest from everywhere. Um, and we've, we actually just, we're, we've set up a partnership with the Marriott Hotel uh, to be our hotel partner and we're super excited about like just all of the vendors that are so thrilled. I was at the Jasper Beer Festival this past weekend uh, and was able to talk to just a, a bunch of people and everybody, you know, the atmosphere is just so hopeful and so fun. And it, it was, a, it was a great event put on by the Alberta beer festival guys and they're amazing. And uh, yeah, it's just, there's a lot, a lot of excitement and uh, you know, it'll get done. Like I said, we're, we're just finalizing up our vendor packages right now, which is kind of giving me, it was like, everything seems to be a couple of weeks behind. But the nice thing is that everybody understands that, right? Like everybody, under, I was like, okay, the intent was to have this done then, but everything's running about two weeks behind. And everybody seems really cool with that. Uh, but the vendors that I've talked to, uh, the distilleries, the craft breweries, the restaurants that I've talked to, everybody is so excited for this event. And it's it's just, you know, that that excitement is always just so contagious. So I, I should have asked this as well, but it's a Calgary Caesar Fest. Does that mean a company from Jasper who might think they have the best Caesar in town might not be appearing or is it only for the, those vendors who are going to be there are they just local vendors or are they somewhat outside of Calgary as well because well I think we're going to have a few a couple of distilleries from Saskatchewan one of my favorite dill pickle vodkas is made in Saskatchewan uh and so we've invited them we're hoping that they'll come and you know, uh, just a, it's kind of a prairie thing where this is a Western Canada. The YY Caesar Fest is very much, it is Calgary. It's Calgary owned. The best Caesar will be crowned at YY Caesar Fest. Maybe it's the best Caesar, you know. We have a couple of uh, national Caesar champion mixologists that are located here in, in, yeah, that have won Caesar awards, Canadian national Caesar awards. And one of them is in Sylvan Lake and the other one is in Airdrie. Uh, those two mythologists. Yeah. Uh, so we've, you know, Alberta is home to some Canadian Caesar champions and I expect those guys to show up with their, uh, with their venues and to, to make a run for that money as far as the, the best Caesar goes. So yeah, it may not be a, a place in Calgary that wins, but uh, we can certainly try and, and we're going to give it our best. And, you know, the event's going to be in Calgary. And uh, If that's I, I not guess. a challenge to every brewery, every bar in Calgary yeah. to step up their yeah. game, I don't know what is. <laughs> and I got to say, we got some good ones in Calgary for sure. We have some really great Caesars in Calgary. So lots of fun. My last question before we start our wrap up here, Rachel, and that is, what else would you like my listeners to know about, my viewers to know about the festival that we haven't talked about? Well, I think that we've been pretty thorough. <laughs> but I would love to hear from your listeners their favorite Caesars or their favorite ingredients. I'd love it. You know, send us pictures of the Caesar creations that you've had. I'd love to see what, what you think is the best Caesar. Um, you know, send us suggestions on vendors like do you have a spot that you go to that you're like these guys have to come to caesar fest because they make the best caesar in town uh another thing that i'm really trying to promote is and the one thing that i love about the caesar and the versatility is that for me it the multicultural aspect that could be brought to a caesar is just so representative of canada and i'm really encouraging some of the other you know local restaurants um that maybe not wouldn't you wouldn't think typically would have a Caesar to create a Caesar and bring it. So 
one of my favorites is like Roy O. He had a, a restaurant called Andrew in town, and he did a Caesar, and it was a Shin Ramen Caesar, and it was made with you know whiskey and clamato, and then he had it with like you know ramen noodle uh, spices as a rimmer, and then he had a big chunk of ramen on the side of it, and it was just a beautiful like Korean infused Canadian Caesar, and I just love that you know that that international but multicultural aspects so I was like I really want to try and you know somebody suggested on reddit the other day they we were talking about how ginger beef was also created in Calgary and then somebody said oh well we need to create a, a, a Caesar that's garnished with ginger beef or like a ginger beef Caesar so it's like the ultimate Calgary Caesar so I'm like I really hope somebody like brings on to that idea and I'd love to see very different international takes on the Caesars so if you have any of that or any suggestions that I would really like to do that yeah that's around the world and 40 Caesars I think would be pretty fun well for those who are listening and those who are watching go to uh, go to Twitter go to Facebook tag us on where the best Caesar is in here in Calgary. What is your best garnish for the Caesar here in Calgary? And what would you like to see at YY Caesar Fest 2022? Rachel, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This is an honor and a pleasure. Well, it has been so much fun. I have, I could talk about Caesars all day long and I so much appreciate the opportunity that you've given me to do so. And uh, for your boldness of just putting it out there on Twitter and saying, hey, how do I contact guests? And I'll be like, hey, <laughs> I'll <laughs> do follow it. Up. it was so easy and super fun. And uh, you're an absolute pleasure to talk to. And uh, yeah. Um, thank you so much for everyone listening. Uh, remember, uh, the links to the show uh, in the show notes are uh, YY Caesar Fest's uh, social media pages, their website, the Eventbrite uh, page where you can buy tickets, and also the exclusive, totally exclusive, nobody needs to know except us listeners and viewers of the Cross Border Interview with Chris Brown, special promo code where you get 20% off CBI Caesars. That's Cross Border Interview Caesar, but just shorten it to CBI Caesars in the show notes. That's CBI Caesars with an S, Caesars with an S in the show notes. Check it out. Get your tickets because you will not want to miss this great event. It is the weekend before the long weekend. So take an extra day off work. Take the Friday off. Get a ticket. Come on down and enjoy yourself. Um, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, have yourself an excellent rest of your day. And remember, everyone, keep talking. Just have a conversation. Get out from behind that keyboard and have a conversation with someone. Talk to you later.